Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Truly, that's what we've been blessed this morning. Amen. The Holy Spirit is definitely moving in the place. First of all, I give obedience to God, the head of my life, to his gladness son Jesus, who is my Lord and personal Savior, and to the Holy Spirit, my competent, who bring all things back to my remembrance and reveal the truth. I kind of enjoy this morning to stand before you. On this Father's Day, 2010. Yeah. And to all the fathers here this morning, happy Father's Day to you all. And as it was stated to all the single mothers who take the responsibility in the role, happy Father's Day to you as well. As we look around and we sang wonderful songs, and he saw the best in me. Amen? And everybody else counted you out, talked about you, criticized you, scorned you, made mockery of you. In spite of all of that, he saw the best. How many of us in here this morning know that there's a process? Yes, Lord. We can sing a song. Yes. But some of us in here right now still going through something. Yes. Amen? Amen. Still are burdened down right now. Yes. Even after singing the song. Yes. Still got heavy hearts. How do we conquer this in spite of what we're going through, in spite of what we see, our condition? What do we do? And we're going to try to touch upon that according to the time and the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 13. Jeremiah chapter 13. And I know once again this is the men's day, but I have to incorporate men and women Amen. to get the full understanding right. of it all. Yes, Yes, men, we are the head. But we are not the dictators. We're the head, but not dictators. Oh, Amen. 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 So we all need it together. Amen. We have it, say amen. Amen. I have the living translation. So if you have the King James or another version, it's going to sound slightly different, but have the same meaning. And I'll be reading from verse 10 and 11. And it reads, These wicked people refuse to listen to me. They stubbornly follow their own desires and worship other gods. Therefore, they will become like this loincloth, good for nothing. As the loincloth clings to a man's waist, so I created Judah and Israel to cling to me, says the Lord. They, they were to be my people, my pride, my glory, and honor, to my name, 
but they will not listen to me. If you may be seated. If I had to choose a topic, it would be what do you do when we become good for nothing? All right. Say that again. Yeah. What do we do yeah. when we become good for nothing? Yeah. Don't you know there are times in my life, and I guess in your life, that we become good for nothing in the home, on a job, and even in the church. Folk become good for nothing. How can we explain becoming good for nothing? It's God's word. It's not something I'm making up. We pray. We come to church. Do the things of God. And every now and then, you find yourself struggling with the fact that this particular time, I feel like I'm good for nothing. Amen? Amen. And I'm going to try to hit some points. And let's take it from the top. Verse 1. This is what the Lord said to me. This is Jeremiah speaking. Go and buy a linen loincloth or a sash or a girdle and put it on, but do not wash it. So I bought the loincloth as the Lord directed me and put it on. Then the Lord gave me another message. Take the linen loincloth you're wearing and go to the Euripus River. Hide it there in a hole in the rocks. So I went and hid it by the rapist as the Lord had instructed me. First, we look at this. The first thing is what is a loincloth or a girdle? What is the purpose of this garment? First of all, it is used to cling. To the body. And if anybody knows anything about having a girdle on, amen? amen? You put it on to hold you. But if the girl is not holding or serving its purpose, it is good for nothing. I didn't want to say ladies, but if it's not serving its purpose and you're struggling and you're trying to get it on and you're hoping you can get it another size and if it still don't fit, then you take the girl off because it's good for nothing and God is saying, some of us, I raise you up in church. I raise you up. I'm a good teaching and but now you've gone astray and you were supposed to cling to me, but now you're good for nothing. The girl says, bye, this girl. Now watch this. You put it on. Don't wash it. I say, well, why not? See right here, it represents the sin. He's had 